Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation. In our last video, we highlighted the fact that the cytochromes of electron transport chain shuttle protons into the intermembrane space, and that the proton gradient produced would be our fuel for ATP production. The main engine that runs oxidative phosphorylation is complex 5, otherwise known as ATP synthase. ATP synthase is a channel that allows protons to flow from one side of the membrane to the other. As these protons flow, the energy they create as they pass fuels the phosphorylation of ADP to ATP. For each proton that flows through ATP synthase, one ATP molecule is produced. Remember, NADH donates its electrons at complex 1. So its electrons facilitate a proton being pumped at complex 1, 3, and 4. Now, FADH gives its electrons at complex 2 which is the only complex in the ETC that, that does not pump protons. The electrons from FADH facilitate hydrogen pumping at complex 3 and 4. As a result, NADH results in a higher production of ATP than FADH. Exactly, NADH creates 3 ATP per NADH, while FADH only results in 2 ATP produced per FADH. To clarify this point, let's talk about ATP, NADH, and FADH production across the entire metabolism of glucose. We started with glycolysis. In glycolysis, a glucose molecule was broken down into two pyruvate molecules. In the process, two ATP were consumed, but four ATP were produced. Thus, for an entire glucose molecule, we had a net ATP production of two ATPs in glycolysis. In addition, we had a production of two NADHs as well. In pyruvate oxidation, we converted each pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, resulting in a total production of two NADHs after both pyruvates are processed. Acetyl-CoA feeds into the citric acid cycle. Each acetyl-CoA produces one GTP, which in turn produces an ATP. So we have two ATP produced from the citric acid cycle. In addition, there are six NADHs and two FADHs that are produced per glucose molecule. At this point, we have a total of four ATP produced. In the electron transport chain is where our FADH and NADH go to work to help create a proton gradient and eventually ATP. Now, if you look at our table, you would see we have 10 NADHs and two FADHs from our reactions. We discussed that each NADH produces three ATP and each FADH produces two ATP. So you would think, if we do some math here, 10 times 3 equals 30, and 2 times 2 equals 4. So we would have 34 ATP produced from the ETC and oxidative phosphorylation. However, this is incorrect. The question is why? Well, remember that glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. The NADH created in glycolysis must be shuttled from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria to be used for the electron transport chain. As a result, an ATP molecule is used for each NADH produced from glycolysis to shuttle that NADH into the mitochondria. Therefore, each NADH from glycolysis only produces a net ATP of 2 per NADH as one is used up in the shuttling process. If we redo our calculations, we see 2 NADH from glycolysis each produce a net 2 ATP. So it has 4 ATP total. We have 2 NADH that comes from pyruvate oxidation and 6 NADH from the citric acid cycle, which each produce 3 ATP. So that's a total of 24 ATP produced. 24 plus the previous 4 we obtained from our NADH from glycolysis is 28. Then each FADH produces 2 ATP. So that's an additional 4 ATP, making a total of 32 ATP from oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transport chain. Overall, including the previous ATP from glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, the entire metabolism of one glucose molecule produces a net of 36 ATP. Well, that was a brief review of oxidative phosphorylation and an overview of ATP production. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share this with your friends on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook. You can follow us at Twitter at iMedSchool and Google Plus and Facebook at iMedicalSchool. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedicalSchool, and I'll see you next time.